Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we're covering two healers, Resto Shaman and Resto Jude and that is based on my raid testing last week. I did a lot of raid testing last week, I didn't get to do a video until today so keep that in mind. There is a new beta build with a couple of changes in terms of spell tuning and this is basically my overview video of how these healers felt in raid, specifically raid environments, how different is Resto Druid compared to Shadowlands? How different is Resto Shaman compared to Shadowlands? What are the different talent builds that are available? What talent builds I tested? How does it feel? Is it fun? Is it interesting? Is it something unique? And we're going to start off with Restoration Druid. Let's go. So actually one of the reasons why I put two healers in this video is because both of the healers feel relatively, how do I say it? They're very similar to Shadowlands counterparts. Depending on which talent build you're going to run and which talent build is going to be meta, again, that's going to be decided when spell tuning is coming out. Not right Right now so this is the build that i tested out and i want to talk about the class tree i want to talk about the class tree before we go, go to the spec tree the different builds that are available so i just wanted to showcase the fact that i felt class tree for resto druids felt very very restrictive with feral form talents the fact that maybe if i want to pick up some of these some of these nodes here well honed instinct or maybe protection of the pack or something like that i am basically locked in and going in the left side locked in and picking feral form abilities that i might not need so it really felt restrictive especially when i'm going to compare this to like a resto shaman tree where you have a lot of freedom in terms of what utility you want to pick resto druid tree the class tree does not feel all that open and you basically again you have to pick innervate i feel like in raid environments you're going to pick innervate and i just went in with hire the wild just for the just to test it out i feel again there is not a lot of choices here I feel it could be redesigned and made a lot better. But let's go to the spec tree. And this is the rest of Druid spec tree that I was checking out, that I was testing out. There is two distinct builds that you can see straight away. So this is the build that I had a lot of success with. I felt this build was pretty strong. It is basically what you have in Shadowlands. It is the one minute convoke. It is the four set bonus and you're basically trying to align them. Now, I didn't have a lot of success because I wasn't using weak horse and things like that. So it was really hard to keep track of my swiftmans but generally speaking it is basically the same build that you run in shadowlands you have this one minute big burst that you can do in terms of healing you're running convoke you have things in terms of memory of mother tree which actually has been nerfed in this week's uh, beta build and you had things like amato's wisdom from legion this has also been nerfed very very recently so some of these talents have been nerfed, some of the rest of the Druid talents have been changed because they're doing really well in terms of pure HPS, but you have a lot of the basic abilities that you had in Shadowlands. The gameplay seems very, very similar outside of the fact that you might be going into something like Boomkin Affinity, the fact that Star Surge's instant cast is pretty interesting, so you might, how do I say, deal damage in a different way, but your healing is really really similar so the gameplay actually feels really similar to what it is in shadowlands except now you have different combinations you can have a two minute tranquility with inner peace which feels really powerful on certain damage patterns especially in some of the raid environments you can combine that with spring blossom you can have things like soul of the forest and combine that with cultivation you have a lot of different combinations that you combine but the gameplay or all of these talents lead to a very similar gameplay which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending if you enjoy shadowlands resto druid now if you go back to the tree again there is another build that i was testing out during my raid environment and that is the double life bloom build where you have things like verdancy where you, when life bloom blooms of the tree targets within your fluorescence are healed so it is dependent on your fluorescence placement. It is dependent if people are stacked. You can have things like photosynthesis. You can have things like budding leaves. And all of a the sudden, these, this kind of build all depends on life bloom blooms. Because you also can have something like Tree of Life. I actually tested out Tree of Life with something like the Scenarius Guidance, where during Incarnation Tree of Life, you gain clear casting. So you're getting a lot of clear casting every six seconds. The cooldown of Incarnation Tree of Life is reduced by 1.5 seconds when life bloom blooms. So the left side of the tree feels like, hey, double life bloom or all emphasis on life bloom bloom effects and all of that can be fed into verdancy through your efflorescence healing. And this didn't feel that strong, mainly because of the boss fights. There were a lot of movement and things like that. Maybe on fights where there's continuous AoE healing needed, this could be interesting to try out. But based on my testing, and again, it's only a couple of bosses that I got to test with my Resto Druid. I felt that that Convoke build, I felt that that four set bonus build with Reforestation, Memory of Mother Tree, Flourish, it all felt really strong because you can combine these really insane bursts, especially with the fact that you have Tranquility on lower cooldown as well. 
So now let's go to Restoration Shaman, and I had a lot of fun with Resto Shaman. Again, the same kind of thing persists for Resto Shaman. Depending on your talent build, I genuinely feel the Dragonflight Resto Shaman, at least in raid environments, feels very similar to what you had in Shadowlands. I think the more interesting aspect of Resto Shaman in the new expansion is to do in Mythic Plus, because you have things like Healing Rain, Dealing Damage, you have Stormkeeper, and just those two abilities alone add to your Mythic Plus rotation in a significant way, while you go to the raid environment now if we go to the rest of shaman tree and again the class tree this is the way that the class tree should be designed because you have so many choices that you can go in terms of utility for example i really wanted to pick up totemic recall because i wanted to try it out with double earth uh, earth and wall totem so that's something that again just to showcase it it feels really cool if you press your earth and wall totem you press your tot totemic recall you have double earth and wall totems and you can really kind of prepare for raid aoe damage and things like that honestly something that i really wanted to test out and i end up doing it or specking it this way but for example you are kind of pigeonholed in getting gust of wind because gust of wind is just such a strong movement ability on such a long uh, such a short cooldown and wrestle shamans need mobility or they have a lot of mobility from the class tree but let's say i didn't go this route and let's say i tried to pick up totemic focus where it increases the duration of a cloud burst that could have been interesting as well what if i would have specced for example double earth shield what if I didn't go the Mana Spring Totem? What if I change? What if I try to get Nature Swiftness? There is a like. What if I try to get extra survivability through Nature Guardian? There's so many different points that it could take out and put in, and that is the way the class tree should be. You shouldn't be limited by certain pathways. You should have a lot of choices. Like for example, if I went the other route, I could have gone Poison Cleansing Totem. I could have gone Stone Skin Totem. It all depends on the fight, and all depends on what I need and. I honestly am really happy about the Shaman class tree. I think it's a lot better than what the Druid provides because Druid one, you really are kind of, you're forced to take a route and uh, I really don't like that. But let's go to the spec tree and that's, this is where the Shaman, again, in terms of rating, this is the build that I went and I think there is a lot of different notes that you can take out. Like for example, I think Ancestral Vigor is going to be something that you will have to spec into when you're doing raid environments because it's a very nice utility spell or something that provides survivability to a whole raid group again depending on your heals but you could also probably spec out of earth and wall totem and go into ancestral protection totem which is honestly a really important aspect of high-end mythic rate progression and you probably will have to do that but i had a decent time with this i did go with primal tide core i think you could go with high tide and just every time you proc high tide you could choke those chain heals especially if you have certain talents to buff your chain heals like so some of them here but it all comes down to in my opinion primordial wave gameplay where you have primordial wave you can spec it and make it stronger you have a lot of talents that make Riptide or applying Riptide stronger like on the currents for each Riptide active on an ally, your heals are stronger. So the more Riptides you have, and this does proc from Primordial Wave. So you can have a bunch of Riptides and you can have Riptides from Primal Tide Core. I actually haven't tested if Primal Tide Core Riptides work with on the currents, but I'm assuming it would. Otherwise, it probably would sound like a bug, but there is a lot of emphasis on applying Riptides. Riptide duration is increased. So the more Riptides you have, the more healing you do. And if you played Primordial Wave build in Shadowlands, again, Shadowlands Primordial Wave build was really potent for a really long time until the end tier where your chain harvest, the end tier kind of came about. But I'm pretty sure a lot of the rest of Shamans in Shadowlands are very familiar with Primordial Wave. And honestly, there is nothing new about this. You are spreading your Riptides. You are using your Primordial Wave. You are trying to feed it into Cloudburst Totem because Cloudburst Totem is still a unique aspect of resto shaman the gameplay feels very similar you might be throwing out your chain heals once in a while depending if you have high tide and things like that we'll have to see if chain heal spam is going to be something that people are going to be doing again it all depends on spell tuning at this point but i played my shaman in a very similar fashion that i would play shaman in shadowlands and i had decent time outside of that the gameplay in terms of the core rotation feels very similar but you have a lot more utility you have a class tree that is brimming with utility abilities. You have so many different choices. You have so many different... Again, I talked about Stone Skin Totem. I talked about if you need Poison Cleansing Totem. If you, like, you have Ancestral Guidance, which you can also use to have really, really strong healing. So there is extra abilities. I actually would say that Resto Shaman feels like Shaman from Shadowlands 
with a bunch of extra buttons because you have so many more possible utility actions that you can have in your action bars and key bindings are going to be a very 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 important aspect because i'm pretty sure resto shaman depending on your build will have the most buttons but you have to keep in mind the rotation is somewhat simplistic but you have a bunch of utility if you enjoy resto shaman and i want to kind of summarize the whole video i want to talk about how both of these healers feel if you've been playing resto shaman or resto jordan in Shadowlands and you've been enjoying them a lot you really like the gameplay you really like the style you like the rest of shaman cloud burst the primordial wave build or for example if you enjoy your rest of druid convoke is coming back you still have your tier sets baked into talent build so a lot of the stuff for rest of druid and rest of shaman i would have to say both of these healers feel the closest to Shadowlands in terms of gameplay depending on the build or at least in raid environments like i talked about rest of shaman I think Resto Shaman in Mythic Plus, the fact that you have talents that will make your healing rain deal damage and you have Stormkeeper. Those two abilities alone will change the way you approach Mythic Plus, which I think is really, really interesting. And I think for Resto Druid, we talked about the double life bloom build, that we talked about the life bloom talents, and there's a bunch of talents that are dependent on blooming of your life bloom. I think that build could be interesting in something like maybe Mythic Plus, maybe raids with consistent AoE damage. I don't know, it's gonna depend on spell tuning. So there is a possibility of these healers feeling a little bit different from what they are in Shadowlands, but I think at the end of the day, if you enjoy these healers, if you're playing these healers and you want to keep playing a similar playstyle, I think these choices for mains, Resto Shaman and Resto Druid, are going to be a good, how do I say, a comfort pick. Because if you are really good at Resto Shaman in retail, or really good at Resto Druid in retail, you're going to be good in Dragonflight because the gameplay changes are not significant enough in order for you to learn a new gameplay. It really isn't that bad. So again, I made this video just to showcase the talents that I was testing. Again, by no means the talents that I showed you are going to be the best or the way to go. This is just something I was testing. I really want to know your opinions about the talents you were doing. But basically the whole video, this whole video is to tell you that, hey, these healers are very similar, at least in raid environments. There are a couple of builds available that are a little bit different, but in essence, Resto Shaman and Resto Druid are most likely staying very similar to what they are in retail, which can be good or a bad thing. Let me know. And again, if you like this video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next guide.